Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Peter and in this video I would like to show you this universal hub for sim racing wheels. The idea behind this design was inspired by one of the well-known brands that have a very similar product. So what I wanted to achieve is a universal button box that you can basically connect to any wheel. So what do we have in here? Um, there are four arms in each corner with a set of buttons and there's two different versions. So we have one with three buttons and this one with four buttons on the front. Additionally, on the back, there's another couple of buttons that you can see in here, both for the top and for the bottom. The main hub um, on the back has rails for the shift paddle shifters um, that I made and showcased in previous video and I will also make sure that any of my future designs will be compatible with this setup and In total the whole wheel right now has 30 buttons. So I think it's pretty good Okay, so let me show you how it works first and then I'll go into a bit more details Here I have this Chinese Sparco wheel attached and now I'd like to replace it with the OMP wheel. First I have to remove all the M5 screws holding the wheel. Okay, so that's done. And here we have a quick access to all the electronics inside. Um, but I'll talk about um, but I'll talk about it a bit more later in the video. So the next step is to loosen the four screws holding the arms as well as the ones holding the buttons to the rails here, the black ones. As you can see, uh, now I am able to easily move uh, the buttons around and adjust them exactly to my liking. Now let's put the OMP wheel on. For now, I'm just holding it loosely with two screws because I'll have to take it off and tighten everything later on. All right, so let me move it around so I feel comfortable with how the buttons are set. Okay, that should be fine for me. Let's remove the wheel and tighten the arms. Okay, so the buttons and the rails are nice and tight right now. Uh, but while I have the wheel removed, I can also take off these side covers here to gain access to the puddle shifters and adjust them if I need to. So inside you can see the holes and the rails. So right now I can just loosen these three screws and move the puddle shifter a bit. But this setup is okay for me, so I'll just keep it the way it is. Alright, let's put the wheel back together. And it's done. What do you guys think about it? I think it's pretty, pretty cool for myself. So, um, like I said, I have the access to the buttons on the back. 
and it's not a perfect design and I'm fully aware of it mainly because well it's all made of plastic so there is a bit of a flex here and um, it would definitely be better if instead of especially with the rails instead of using plastic I used um, like aluminium or something I just don't have the CNC router so it's 3D printing is my only option at the moment. So the heart of this mod is a board called Blue HID and it's a pretty cool invention. It has a built-in uh, Bluetooth and a number of pins on both sides that enable me to connect any buttons, switches, analog potentiometers, etc. And the biggest advantage of this board is that it has a brilliant Windows UI. You simply select the pin you want to connect your button to and choose whether the connection is a keyboard button, gamepad switch, analog access, rotary encoder, whatever. The main downside, unfortunately, is the price. I paid 50 pounds for this particular one which in my opinion is quite a lot and especially if you compare it to the Arduino board. Um, the buttons are connected very simply so each, each switch has two pins on the back um, one pin goes to the blue hit board and the other goes to the ground and in my opinion, it is better to daisy chain all of these buttons and have them connected to a single ground pin um, because there aren't that many pins here, so it's, um, it's just better to utilize them for buttons rather than the grounds, right? Um, let me just very quickly show you how I have it connected in here. It's not great to show on camera. And hopefully I won't damage anything. Let's see here. That's how I did it. All right. So we have the bl uh, the black wire, which is the ground. It just jumps between all the switches, and then goes into the board. You might notice that. At the moment I only have one of these arms wired um, and that is because I'm working on some other designs as well and I'll have to remove the the blue hit board anyway so I just figured I won't be wiring everything also I would strongly recommend soldering directly to the board some good qual quality silicon wires rather than using these cheap plastic ones which are meant rather for prototyping than long-term use. It would be more convenient for you and most definitely uh, much more durable. Now let's talk a bit about the power delivery. Um, the version I'm using here is powered directly from the Trustmaster wheelbase um, and I simply connected the two pins for the battery here if I unplug it, it's a simple plug here and these two wires are connected to the power and ground of the PS2 connector so this one goes into the wheelbase and the whole uh, system is powered up. Please refer to my guide video on how to make the electronics for the Thrustmaster wheel for the connection diagrams so you know uh, which pins to solder to. Also you probably noticed I have my quick release adapter here for the custom wheel um, but this is slightly modified version so this is not the standard I had so far um, it needed additional few um, screw holes here. Right, so let's see how it works. I have my wheelbase powered on, so let's plug in the wheel. 
and you will notice in the game controllers in Windows the six axis 32 button joystick with hat switch appeared and this is the blue hood that's inside the universal hub so if I double click on it right now and just test a couple of buttons as you can see all lights up and works perfectly fine same for the shifters it's all good now if you don't own a Trustmaster wheel don't worry I got you covered as well what you need is this little adapter on the back side and that holds the four screws for the arm rails here and the remaining six holes are for the standard 70 millimeters mounting another thing to sort out is the power so if you can um, connect the wires to the wheelbase you are using then just basically do the same thing i did for the trust master and just plug them into the battery port here now if that's not possible you can always use a lipo battery like this one this is a 3.7 volt uh, 750 milliampers so i would suggest um, using a hot glue or a double-sided tape and just put it underneath one of the side covers and just put it like like this here in addition um, you will need some way to charge this battery um, the blue hit does have a charging functionality in it um, but the thing is you need to connect the cable to the uh, mini USB um, plug on it and I just found it very hard to figure out a design that would enable it um, just to straightforward just plug in uh, the cable directly to blue head so the next best thing is to use one of these tiny charging boards um, that you can just put underneath the second cover and then I also made a separate design that has a cutout on the side for you to plug in the micro USB into the charging board also I'm working on some cheaper alternatives to the blue HID so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it okay guys that's it for the video hope you liked it thanks for watching and have a great rest of the day bye